Hello and welcome to another standard video. Today we're going to have some more fun with the new Overlords from Duskborn, paired with Lich Knight's Conquest. This 5 mana sorcery lets us sacrifice any number of artifacts, enchantments and or tokens to return that many creature cards from our graveyard to the battlefield. So the idea is pretty simple. We're going to try to impend our Overlords. The Black Overlord costs just 2 mana, can also maybe fill the graveyard with additional creatures that we can then later reanimate. And then we've got the Green Overlord helping us ramp, making an everywhere land token, and the White Overlord making a pair of flying insect tokens. And then we'll have these enchantments in play with time counters on them. Normally we would have to wait quite a few turns before we get the creature in play to start attacking, but now if we just cast our Lich Knight's Conquest, we can sacrifice all those impended overlords and immediately bring them back from the graveyard. Maybe we had some additional tokens we can sacrifice, and we happen to mill more creatures with a Black Overlord, we can bring those back as well, especially when you consider that the Everywhere token from Overlord can also be sacrificed to a Lich Nice Conquest, and of course we can also sacrifice those Insect tokens, so usually we have more things to sacrifice than creatures we can return out of the graveyard, but either way, Lich Nice Conquest will very quickly present lethal, and if the opponent doesn't have a Sweeper to catch up, they're gonna lose the game. So that's kind of our main game plan. We also have two copies of Scroll Shift as kind of an instant speed mini version of Lich Knight Conquest. We can just exile an artifact, creature or enchantment we control and return it to the battlefield and draw a card. So we can also once again impend one of our overlords and then flicker it with Scroll Shift to have it back in play without having to wait on all those time counters. And then we also have a couple creatures that synergize well in this deck. Glissa Sunslayer can be great against a lot of decks, can also help us destroy opposing enchantments, and can also remove counters from permanents. So if this hits the opponent, and as a 3-3 first rank death touch, it's pretty difficult for the opponent to block profitably, then now we can also maybe remove time counters from our own overlords to get them in play a little sooner. And then a Calyx can also be very powerful if it gets going. We have a lot of enchantments to trigger Constellation, although this is not a deck where we're going to play Calyx and immediately hit the opponent with an enchanted creature to start copying stuff. We usually do need to untap with Calyx before we can actually make those powerful attacks, but if we have an impended Overlord and Calyx manages to hit the opponent somehow, we can make copies of the Overlord and then it will come into play as a creature, so that's also incredibly powerful, especially if we can curve Calyx into the White Overlord and then immediately make all those additional insect tokens. And then rounding out the deck, of course, up the Beanstalk is a must-have when you're playing Overlords, since they will have mana value 5 or greater even if you impend them, so that can draw us a lot of extra cards. And then in our removal section, we've got Elspeth's Smite, alongside four copies of Anoint with Affliction. These are tailor-made to answer all the red aggro decks out there, since exiling the opponent's creatures is very important. And then Nowhere to Run is still decent against red aggro, since decreasing power and toughness means you don't take as much damage from their creatures dying, but it's also very good against all the new aura decks, whether it's the red-white aura deck or maybe a green-white build, since we can ignore all their ward and hexproof tricks, and then shrinking down their creatures is usually still good enough to answer them, as long as they're not too large. And then Nowhere to Run can also set up a turn 3 scroll shift where we flicker the enchantment to take out an additional creature. Can also do the same with Up the Beanstalk just to draw two cards if we don't have anything else going on. Only running the two copies of the Black Overlord, because while it is good at filling the graveyard for Lich Knight Conquest, it's not a card that will often find a creature for us to return out of the graveyard, since we only have the four non-avatar creatures in the deck. But uh, that's also why I've added Glissa and Calyx, just to diversify our threats a little bit and to make the Black Overlord a lot better. And then a mana base also gets the advantage of Cavern of Souls making our avatars uncounterable. And then a plenty of dual lands for mana fixing, all 12 of the fast lands mixed with the pain lands since the Abzan callers didn't really get a ton of new verge lands, so we're better off going with fast lands and pain lands so we can actually cast a removal early when we need it, as opposed to having the mix of surveil lands plus verge lands, which can also be a nice way to fix your callers, but since we only have the one verge land in green-white, I think I prefer this set up instead and then one of each basic just in case we need to search those up so yeah that's our deck now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does okay we're on the play we have smite into beanstalk and then a little bit of uh, waiting until we can do something with conquest no black mana could also be a concern yeah this one's borderline i think i still try it got a lot of good cards we can draw in the meantime Calyx, Green Overlord, of course, at the top of our list. And our opponent turns out to be on Red Aggro with Leyline and now Scamp. 
So can't afford to tap out for Beanstalk. Need to keep up Smite to respect the turn 2 kill. And then next turn I can play Beanstalk while keeping up Smite. Opponent just playing a bunch of creatures out. So now they can start diversifying their pump spells and things get pretty tricky. Could keep up nowhere to run now as well. Is that worth it? Means I'll have a tap plan to deal with later. Yeah, I think it's still safer. Although if I keep up three mana, is your opponent gonna go for it yet? They might. There's also green mana to worry about, so preventing hexproof tricks from working could also be pretty important here. So your opponent's gonna open with a felonious rage on Swiss Spear. And probably targeting Heartfire Hero as well, triggering Valiant. So we could start with Smite on Heartfire Hero. Try and exile that. Opponent's got a Monstrous Rage, which is not going to save the Heartfire Hero, but of course would still pump Scamp and Swiss Spear most likely. I think taking out Scamp is still more important than answering Swiss Spear here. Also, if they had another instant left, they could have prowessed out of range. So now we can know where to run. Take out the Scamp. Not take any damage. And as the dust settles, there should only be a Swiss Spear left. Still hitting us for 8, so we are actually dead to a Cell Sword if they had it left, which is impressive. Now, probably just cast Beanstalk, hope to draw another removal spell. So we want to keep a blank mana, and then probably just end up playing a tapped thicket anyways. I guess if I draw Smite specifically, it's better to have white mana available, but if I draw black removal, I need the wastes. Alright, and then now play a Blooming Marsh, pass a turn. So it could still very much be dead. Annoyance a good draw, although I imagine we still cast Overlord here to get a bit of board presence. And then next turn we can keep up Anoint. Could have also impended the Overlord since we have Conquest to then bring it back. And then we could have kept up Anoint in the meantime. Put on hard casting a second Leyline and passes back. Alright, so we may have survived. Now I get to impend Overlord, keep up Anoint so we don't die to any shenanigans. And then Conquest to bring everything back. Should be quite effective. Question is whether Overlord attacks in the meantime. Might be worth it. Might be a little greedy. Because yeah, the two ones don't block Swiss Spear particularly well. But I also want to get this game over with. And I can potentially take two from a Swiss Spear. Even Drew Smite, although can't keep everything available. So we'll pass. Opponent's not even attacking, so I can keep up Annoyance. And then now we can attack, Conquest, and still have a bunch of removal available. Finding another Smite. So I'll be very impressive if her opponent manages to combo through all of this. We even have nowhere to run to stop any hexproof tricks. And our opponent explodes, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. We've got a decent hand. Just missing some interaction for aggro. But on the play we can maybe go Beanstalk into either Overlord or Calyx. Which is a good starting point. Put on blue-white. Hoping it's more of a Oculus deck than a pure control deck. If they are on control, finding Cavern of Souls would help. Opponent passes with mana up. Yeah, we can uh, play Calyx here. That resolves. Opponent passes, so they likely have removal that can destroy an attacking creature. Maybe a reason not to attack. 
Although now at least if they were to, let's say, counter the Overlord, we might be able to attack with Calyx, so they have to decide. But let's it resolve. So I don't actually think we should attack. It's going to make it more awkward for the opponent in future turns to deal with Calyx. Otherwise we're just kind of playing into their answers. But now they do get to deduce instead. So there is a drawback to not forcing them to use their answer. But yeah, cards like the Whale or Not On My Watch can all answer Calyx. Opponent actually with the Caretaker's Talents, copying the clue. So coast is clear for Calyx to connect now, that's awesome. And now we face a tough decision. Do we impend Overlord and copy it, and then get our board swept up by a Sunfall? Or do we just copy up the Beanstalk, which is probably the safer play that will provide a steady stream of card advantage? So, attack. Want to copy Beanstalk before we impend. And then by impending we also spread out our threats more. Plus, we also have Conquest to get the uh, Overlords in action. So this seems fine. Okay, so we have some pressure, but we also have a steady stream of card advantage. So we're not going all in with Overlord. Opponent had the Sunfall anyway. So could still Conquest, draw two cards, get the two Overlords going. Could even impend another Overlord first. Would be painful if they have a second Sunfall, which is somewhat likely. But it is more exciting, so gonna go for it. Plus we could mill more creatures with Overlord as well. Glissa could also be an answer to the talent. And yeah, Conquest is looking good. Question is if I sacrifice a Beanstalk to it. Just to put more stuff in play. Maybe sacking the Everywhere tokens worth it since we'll get Overlord back anyway. So yeah, one, two, three, four. And then one, two, three, four. Oh, that's a lot of value. Just gotta hope they don't sunfall me again. And then now we also have Cavern to make stuff uncounterable. Do I want to discard something specific to maybe set up another conquest? Not particularly. Alright, let's see what they've got. They're fetching. And it's another sunfall, alright. Well, here we go again. This is now an 8-powered incubator. So, what's next? Play Calyx, Glissa, can impend another Overlord or cast it. How much mana do we have total? Nine. Yeah, maybe impend Overlord, play Glissa, play Calyx. Draw a couple more cards. So two Sunfalls gone. Opponent's gonna pass. Alright, so 31 cards remaining. Playing another Beanstalk can be a little sketchy here, although we can always sacrifice them to the Conquest. So, starting with an impended Overlord could be fine. Now they can block Calyx with their huge incubators. And we currently don't have an Anoint with Affliction to answer those. Probably still growing Calyx. So maybe I just attack with Glissa here since we also have a replacement. Yeah, let's uh, just send in Glissa. Because again, I could shrink down their token with a Nowhere to Run, but I expect them to have removal that exiles attacking creatures. Not on my watch, that's fine. So that's exiled. Can play another Glissa and another Beanstalk. Hmm. 
Maybe diversify our threats a little bit. I guess Glissa can be counterable right now, so let's make it uncounterable. And pass a turn. So we've got a decent board. We'll see if they feel inclined to wipe the board again. Once we find annoyance, it becomes easier to attack past our incubator. And Jace milling us could also be in our future, so that's very much a concern. They've got another talent. Alright, game goes on. Another beanstalk. May still be worth it just to grow our other flyer. And then nothing to return with Conquest other than one Overlord, but we could put the pedal to the metal here by turning those into creatures as well. So those are all options. I think for now I attack all out. Even if Kallax dies I can bring it back with Conquest as well. And with a Nowhere to Run we can shrink down their 8-8. That all happens. They're chumping Glissa, blocking Calyx. So we can shrink down their token into a 5 5 while making Calyx a 6 6. Damage happens. So, yeah, I think we've got enough pressure in play where I don't need to cast a conquest. Glissa threatens to destroy their talents. They're at 10. It's going to be a Teferi. Can also make a creature token. Draw with double talents. Bone's going to level up. Make another one. Alright, so we don't have a lot of options. Just gonna start attacking and see what happens. Glissa goes face. Tokens go after Teferi. Kallax maybe goes face as well. Could have cast Conquest just to draw a bunch of cards. Although I'm kind of worried about a Jace now. Pun once again chumping. And they're gonna maybe keep Teferi alive. Wheel bouncing my token. That works. Not backing. Yeah, I mean, it is really tempting to conquest here just to draw a million cards, but they still haven't cast another Sunfall to left in the deck. Although the problem here too is that I'm not really overpowering these caretaker's talents anytime soon. They can just keep churning out tokens, so maybe I should conquest, even if it's not for a crazy amount. Start by drawing four. Alright, so let's say we sack the Overlord, since that's going to come into play anyways. And then I can sacrifice Nowhere to Run to bring back the Overlord. And then keep the White Overlords impended. And then spread out the counter some more. Do I play another Beanstalk? I guess we could still survive a Jace if we don't. The fairy makes a token, draws with talents. 
could still anoint their token at any point, so not too worried about it growing. Glimmer Burst makes a 1-1 one, one draws too, sure. So they are just actively digging for a Sunfall, it seems. Alright, end of turn, anoint your 6-6. Six, six. They might try and counter. Three steps ahead to counter. That's fine. You can still know where to run your 1-1. One, one. While triggering Calyx and our opponent explodes. Wow, so very grindy game here, but yeah, managed to even beat double Sunfall. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand is keepable. Can okay, nowhere to run on two. Gliss on three. And we're just a white man away from the white overlord. Our opponent on mono reds with a percussionist. Don't see that one too often. I see, so maybe more of a red-black sacrifice deck, if that will explain it. So yeah, not in a hurry to remove their percussionists. I think we also wait on the Black Overlord, since we might be able to return Glissa after they remove it. So we can get a bit more value. Or a Brass Forge, that's a problem card. Do we remove the percussionists? Glissa is also a way of removing counters from the forge, so that's kind of a neat synergy. But uh, sure, we'll take out the percussionist. Don't know if they play many other large creatures. Possible they have braids, which is certainly worth answering as well. Up the beanstalk's not bad. Still tempted to play Glissa first. Or we can go with Overlord to improve our mana. We do have a Conquest in hand as well, so we can try and set that up. Just go over the top. So a ton of options. Yeah, maybe improving my mana is still the more important thing. Beanstalk first can also help draw more lanes. If I play Glissa, there's a decent chance it just gets removed. And then by setting up the Overlord, we can next turn also maybe double spell Beanstalk with the Overlord. Or just get the White Overlord going, setting up Conquest better. Opponent's got a Nightmare to make me discard, could actually be an advantage here. Let's us put something expensive in the graveyard to Conquest back. Yeah, I'm not hating on the White Overlord. Although well, White Overlord does provide a lot of tokens to then reanimate more things. So maybe we do ditch Glissa here. Yeah, it's a close call between Glissa and Overlord. Might still be Overlord. Upside of discarding Glissa is that I can use the Black Overlord to get it back. But I kind of want it to be in the graveyard. And by going Beanstalk into Overlord, we improve our odds of hitting a land. And we found it, so... Draw Calyx also would have been good to have in the graveyard to return. Okay, so now we've got double white Overlords to Conquest back. So I'm happy they made me discard. Opponent could deal quite a bit of damage, especially if they can replace the cursed roll with a different one, but nope. Just hits us for one. And then a three more from the forge. You can see maybe a Viper show up here. Yep. Been working on my own Viper list that's also red-black. And they did indeed sacrifice the roll now. Alright, can discard another creature we can maybe reanimate. And that Nightmare makes me discard again, don't mind if I do. Alright, time for conquests. Draw of Beanstalk. Sacrifice five things. Probably just all four Overlords and a Calyx, which will get a bunch of Constellation triggers. Sure. And then we can return Glissa with a Black Overlord, so we have more things to discard to the Viper. And, uh, yeah, I don't know if it really matters here. Can grow Calyx, I guess. So 
So we end up with a 7 7. Get Glissa back. Pass a turn. And we've got ample creatures to sacrifice or cards to discard. Viper attacks. Discard Glissa since we can again conquest it back. Annoyance or Beanstalk can go. And we'll block. Calyx might get finished off by a burn spell. I don't think they're necessarily playing Monstrous Rage for Trample, otherwise I could just jump with a token. But yeah, I don't think it really matters too much. Sure, I guess they can finish off Calyx if they really want to. That's going to be another Viper. Can sack a token, maybe. And our opponent has seen enough. Next turn we'll have plenty of damage, especially if we anoint their 3-2 as well. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand seems acceptable. We've got our answers to aggro. Can set up our conquest with our White Overlord. And we are indeed up against a red aggro with turn 1 scamp. Luckily no ley line in play, otherwise we could have just died before getting to a second land. They've got another scamp. So ideally they commit some pump spell to the scamp before we take it out. And now we can also ramp on turn 3 with Overlord of the Hauntwoods. Might of the Meek to draw. Could respond now to deny the card draw. I think we let it go so they feel more confident in maybe committing some pump spells. Opponent just dealing two with the scamps. So, yeah, probably wouldn't be able to tap out for my overlord here. I'm just gonna keep up mana, and at least we're still hitting our land drops. And then maybe I'll go. End of turn, remove a scamp. Ah, they do also have a Heartfire Hero. So they might have a Cell Sword in hand, but just missing a way to increase power. Another Might of the Meek. I think I let that resolve, since if I remove the Hero and they go Pump Spell, Attack, plus have a Cell Sword, I could just die. And then now we can know where to run on the Heartfire here end of turn. At least they're not dealing a ton of damage with the scamps in the meantime. Could see them trying to manifest Dread in response, but Pwn lets it go. And Tap finds Scroll Shift, can also flicker nowhere to run for what it's worth. So just gotta keep up removal. That's where having a one mana smite would be a little easier to keep up while still progressing our own game plan. Right, there's the red ley line now, so it's showtime for the opponents. No blocks, take two, and then end of turn. Can uh, maybe flicker nowhere to run with scroll shift, although then we could see them manifest dread to make a bunch of tutus in response, which is still kind of problematic. But it is a more mana efficient play here, which also draws a card. And by decreasing power, we're unlikely to take a ton of damage. Alright, that works. So don't take any damage. Since Scamp had minus two power. And up the Beanstalk, the draw. So still need to keep up Annoyance. Can either up the Beanstalk or play the Overlord. I guess we Beanstalk, since that might draw into another cheap removal spell. And then next turn we'll actually get to draw when impending the Overlord. So yeah, no creatures in Graveyard to return with Conquest. But plenty of enchantments we could sacrifice if needed. Scamp attacks. Again, gotta be patient. And now our opponent's committing turn inside out. We'll see if they have anything else, since we can exile the scamp, there's no repercussions here. 
So their last card might have been a Cell Sword. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand's functional. A little weak to aggro, perhaps, with no real removal. Although Glissa can sometimes be a good roadblock. Put on red-green with Commercial District. So less likely to be a hyper aggro deck as we see Galta. So it might be Dinosaur Reanimator instead. Which, uh, yeah, could prove to be a tougher matchup. We're both pretty slow to get going, but if our opponent can cheat a Galta into play, followed by more creatures, we could be in serious trouble. Now Glissa would still, I guess, destroy a Galta, even if it's a 12 power Trampler. We destroy it in first strike. So Glissa could be a good blocker, but can also expect him to have a few removal spells for it. Okay, so Glissa it is. Next turn also threatening to remove time counters from the Overlord, so we can immediately have it in play. Opponent can cast a 5-mana reanimation spell already, thanks to the treasure from the invasion. And yep, Faithful can pay 4 mana to bring back Galta. And we'll see what other creatures they have left. Well, those are pretty good, so Volgavoth and Itali. So yeah, this game seems over. Opponents hit an Overlord and a Seed of Hope. And there's not a whole lot we can do here. Glissa is still a good blocker, but there's just too much coming our way. Could also destroy the Overlord if it connects. Opponent could just jump and then kill us on the way back. Anything I could draw into with another Beanstalk, not that I can think of. So yeah, this game's just over. Full impend, draw a card and pass a turn. And maybe Glissa gets to take out Galta for fun. Right, that a virtue of persistence anyway. So that's not happening. Alright. That's good enough for me. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. Our hand seems keepable. Beanstalk into Overlord. That's kind of our dream start. But let's see if we're up against a very aggressive deck. We're not. And Conquest will be a nice follow-up. Does our opponent have the bats? A Bronco. Not quite as bad here. So this can name Horror. Imp and Overlord draw a card. Annoying could be an answer to the Bronco. But we might prefer impending the Overlord to set up our conquest as soon as possible. And Dread Knight's 3 2 Trample is acceptable. Let's them saddle the Bronco and we'll see what they reveal. Just a Liliana. Still decent. Also, reason to make some 2 1 tokens before committing something like Calyx to the board. And then Anoint's also good to exile the Dread Knight, so it doesn't come back. But yeah, I think just going for Overlord makes the most sense. Can draw off Beanstalk. And then we want to think about the possibility of drawing into an Elspeth Smite versus drawing into a Tap Land. Well, tapping this way, I guess, didn't accomplish anything. So it could have just impended first and then played a Tap Land. Wanted to keep up white mana for a potential Smite top deck. Points got to cut down. Probably not going to matter too much in the grand scheme of things. Next turn we could Conquest, bringing back both Overlords right away. And then play a tap land. Or we could take it slow and impend another one first. Depends how greedy we get. Right, opponent's got a bat. Can take away the Conquest. But then Anoint can still maybe take care of the bat. Opponent takes a removal spell. So now we're potentially more incentivized to Conquest while we get the chance. 
Innkeeper's Talent points towards the uh, Vraska combo as well. Also very good with Liliana. If they can get it to level 3, they could immediately ultimate. So means we're kind of running out of time. And it's better to try and apply pressure right now as opposed to trying to extract more value. So yeah, we could Conquest now. And then we end up with the two Overlords. Three to one Flyers total. That is pretty good. Alternatively, I could go for another Overlord play a tap land, and then next turn bring triple overlord back. Although I can just cast the white overlord next turn too. So I don't think we need to get too greedy. Find a scroll shift. And we can attack. Alright, so we have a decent board now. Protected from a Liliana minus two. And we've got a few fun plays we can make next turn as well. Opponent is leveling up the talents, so it's going to be a Shieldred instead of a level three. So it probably means they don't have a Vraska in hand, otherwise they could have still tried to threaten lethal. Get to untap. And yeah, we can go ahead and attack here. Trying to make some trades. But can also use scroll shift if we really want to. Opponent just jumping the overlord. So opponent's taking 12. That happens. Maybe they're hoping for a Hail Mary with a Caustic Bronco next turn. Not much I can do to stop that. Other than, I guess, avoid drawing too many cards with Shieldred in play. So, to that end, I could just play Calyx. Should have enough to cross the finish line next turn. Although if they gain, let's say, four more life with a Deep Cavern Bat, two more from Shieldred, they're at 12. I do want to make sure I actually have lethal. So maybe casting Overlord is still the play here, after all. Yeah, maybe I'll just go for Calyx, keep up scroll shifts. Although both scroll shift or casting or impending an overlord would draw cards, so I lose two to shield it. Problem now if I try and scroll shift one of my overlords is they could remove it a response, and then maybe I'm a little bit short on winning the game next turn. This opponent does go to a level three talents. Now one interesting play we could also make is block with a token on the bat and then flicker my own token with scroll shift just to deny the life gain of Deep Cavern Bat. But uh, yeah, Pona's going for it, so if this Bronco reveals some 8-mana card, we could die. Counter on Shieldreds. So they're maybe diversifying, or they want the uh, extra ward. And we'll see what the Bronco reveals. That's probably the main thing that could win them the game. And it's gonna be just a Lance. Alright, so now we can safely scroll shift an Overlord if we want to. Find a Conquest. Get some more triggers. So we could even trade for shield right here. If we really want to. So our opponent's going to be at 9. And we should have lethal on the way back. Can even anoint their dread knights. And that'll do it. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Our hand seems fine. Especially if we can find an Overlord to trigger up the Beanstalk. Facing red. And that's the white Overlord. So can Beanstalk again. Keeping up white mana in case we draw a Smite. Opponent more of a ramp deck after all. Okay, so play Beanstalk. And then next turn, draw two cards. Opponent might be some sort of Calamity combo deck with Smuggler Surprise. So if they get to six mana, they could potentially win out of nowhere. So they do have that advantage.
Although with enough blockers back, we might still be able to survive the combo. And all we can do for now is make some two ones. Poon is going to torch one of them. And the next turn, Conquest, just to essentially flicker the Overlord, would still draw two of Beanstalk, so it might still be better than Scroll Shift. Poon is going to keep on ramping. Nowhere to run, unlikely to be incredibly impactful. Although I suppose we could flicker it with scroll shift to then take out some six toughness creature like Calamity itself. So there is some merit to keeping that combo available. But I think it's still more important that we apply some pressure here. And then next turn we can maybe keep that available. So the Overlord's back. Can discard a land to hand size. And we'll see if there's a Smuggler Surprise in our future. Cavern naming Dinosaur. Maybe for a Trumpeting Carnosaur. Yeah, there's a Surprise. And they did indeed find a Carnosaur. Just one Carnosaur in play. Alright, so... They were hoping to maybe find Calamity, but couldn't quite get there. Trailblazer can make mana. And our opponent explodes. Yeah, next turn we can do some serious damage while keeping up interaction. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. We've got a decent hand. Would uh, be lovely if we can find our Lich Knight's Conquest to eventually get all these Overlords in play. But for now, we've got Smite, Black Overlord, Green Overlord... And then the white one, using the extra mana we get. They're also uncounterable. Don't need to take much damage, so... All in all, a decent hand. Opponents on red, with a Heartfire Hero. Calyx to draw. So now the question becomes, do we keep up Smite? I think we do. Black Overlord's also better once Calyx maybe ends up in the graveyard. And if they don't have any additional creatures, we can maybe afford to tap out on turn 3. Although I don't expect them to go all out on this Hardfire Hero into 2 open mana. It's going to be a Swiss Spear next. So they are already diversifying a little bit. And they're going to Monster Strage. Alright, at least we get to exile the hero. Prevent quite a bit of damage. And then against Monorads. Kind of like going for Calyx here. Still probably naming Horror since it'll save us more damage in the long run, plus we need double white. Because yeah, most of these red decks don't really play any removal spells, and they might have a difficult time stopping Calyx from hitting them, in which case we can start copying the Overlords. Punt actually has double shock here to take it out, it seems. Alright, fair enough. Shock is sometimes the exception, but they need a two of those. And then now we can impend Overlord to make some blockers. Seems alright. Alternative of impending the green Overlord to then maybe impend the black one, get back Calyx would also be decent. Although now if we were to draw, let's say, a scroll shift, we already have the white Overlord to flicker. So a spear attacks. So what do they need to survive a double block? Monstrous Rage already gets it to 4 toughness, so just Monstrous Rage plus another pump spell would do it. But they've already cast one. Yeah, I think I still go for it. They would have to expend a lot of resources just to keep the Swiss Spear alive. Point's gonna turn inside out, so at least they'll have a leftover 2-2. Two -two. And a third shock. Alright, so Swiss Spear doesn't die. But we also don't take any damage, so that's fine by me. And then now, green versus black overlord. If I still want to see Calyx in action, maybe it's black overlord here. Although, let's see, if we go for the green one next turn, I can impend and cast Calyx. So I guess extra mana is still probably better. Yeah, 
again happy to block. Opponent's got two cards left, so... They're gonna have to use their last spells just to trade. And now Glissa's good too. But uh, yeah, let's have some fun, get Calyx in play. And now we know our opponent's probably out of shocks. Unless they respond to the trigger here, which they did not. Okay, and then now can even grow Calyx with another Overlord before attacking. And before you know it, we'll have double Overlord of the Mistmoors in play. Alright, so we got to see our Lich Knight Conquest in action, and I'm pretty happy with where the deck ended up. We've got tools to beat aggro, if we have them in our opening hand, that is. Against control, especially Sunfall decks, can be pretty rough, since uh, we tend to put a lot of creatures in play at once with our Conquest, so then Sunfall exiling them all can be pretty brutal. So those matchups are going to be pretty tough, but in general I've had a good time playing this deck after tweaking it a little bit, since the initial versions weren't quite as successful. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.